Welcome to the First Time Home Buyer Podcast. My name is Laura Moreno and I am your host. In this podcast, I interview home buyers and the best real estate professionals in America, and I add my personal tips as well. So if you're considering buying your first home, you are in the right place. I am also the founder of HomeFlow, an online tool that gives you an easy and a straightforward path to buy your first home and that aggregates everything related to your home purchase in one place, like your properties, documents, and messages. We also introduce you to one of our trusted home buying advisors that can help you answer the common questions about buying your first home, such as, should I buy or keep on renting? How can I save money to buy my first home? And how can I access grants and down payment assistance programs? Or how can I improve my credit score? And once you're ready, we introduce you to the best real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and home inspectors in America, and help you review all your documentation so that you can have an amazing experience buying your first home. To learn more and to find out your new and amazing home buyer score, go to tryhomeflow.com. Now, on to the show. First Time Home Buyers Nation, I am Laura Moreno, and I am super excited to bring you our fantastic guest today, Aaron Kin. Aaron is a real estate agent in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, with over 20 years of experience. He has helped over 3,000 families buy and sell homes in the area, and he's eager to help his clients in any way he can. In his free time, he likes fishing and is spending time with his four kids. Aaron, are you ready to flow? Yeah, let's do it. Great. So I've given our community just a little insight. Please share more about you personally and then expand upon your business. Yeah, so personally, um, yeah, I've been in the business 20 years. Before that, I was a high school art teacher and a coach. Uh, I did that for four years, getting out of college, and then went into real estate shortly thereafter. Um, I, my wife is also uh, in our business as well. We're a team. And then uh, our oldest son actually has his real estate license with us as well. So we kind of have a family business going on right now. I love family businesses. I mean, how old is your son? My son is 20. He got his real estate license when he was 18. Wow. You know what? I'm kind of like so jealous of these kind of families like yours that you're born into real estate because you have an advantage over everyone else. Like you breathe real estate, you breathe buying homes, selling them, you know, investment properties. Like, and, and I love that. And for many people out there, Buying a, re- buying a property is like the hardest thing ever. Why for you, because you were, and your son, because you were born in this world, it seems to me that it's going to be easier. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think part of it's a little easier because he's heard the language and the lingo and us talking back and forth. He can't help but talk about real estate when you're in it, you know, especially when both of his parents are. And then, you know, he hears that every day. So he went out and did it himself. He he made the decision to do it. We didn't push him or pressure him into it. You know, that was his decision. And I think part of it's a little harder for him too, uh, simply for the fact that he thinks, he thought, I believe it was going to be a little easier than it actually is. You know, it does take quite a bit of time and there's a lot of complexity and a lot to learn. You know, it's not just you wake up and sell houses, <laughs> you know, so. And what is he working on now? I mean, what do you give him to do? Yeah, so he's working mostly with buyers um, right now. And then, you know, he's making phone calls and doing the things he should be doing as a real estate agent to uh, help people that are looking to buy and sell. Got it. So let's talk about that. He's working mostly with buyers. And uh, that's something I want our audience also to realize is why is he working with home buyers? Um, is that the, the step? Is that when where new agents start by working with home buyers? And why is that? I think people start with home buyers, not necessarily because it's easier. I think it's um, an easier conversation because you can really co- contribute right away uh, through education, knowledge, and you know, uh, teaching them about the process. It's much easier than going into a seller and you know that seller is on the hook for all of the commission. You know, so you have to usually in competition beat the other people with what you offer. And a lot of those starting out don't offer a whole lot because they're just starting. So it's easier. You have the free time. You have the time available for every buyer to show all the houses they need to see and be there, be there at their whim, you know, basically. So I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards buyers to start with. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And it, 
uh, when I started in, in when, when we bought our first home, I thought we were going to be like, uh, everyone was going to be fighting for our business. But I realized that actually home buyers, we require a lot of time and not every real estate agent wants to work with home buyers. It's usually the people that have more time, more interest. Uh, but yeah, it, it was interesting to see. Yeah, and I, I still, 20 years later, it was my 21st year, I I still work with buyers and first time home buyers and uh, all types of buyers. I, I don't, I missed, when I went just strictly listings, I missed the buyer interaction because you usually have a little bit better uh, relationship developed with them because you're with them multiple times and for hours at a time versus in a listing, you may be with them for an hour or two up front and then it's all phone calls from that point forward. So. And I suppose that that's why it's important to really get on well with your agent. Like you're going to spend hours and hours and hours with that agent. So you better, you better have a good relationship with, with them. Yeah. And at minimum, you should at least trust them and their knowledge of the, that they're going to help you in your ability to find a home and negotiate something so you can, you can have your dream home. Oh, so to send, tell me more about your brokerage. You've done over 3,000 transactions, which is amazing. I mean, it's so big. And you're in the Fort, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, you also tell me that you provide a one-stop shop for everything that they need. Can you tell me more about how you work? Yes. Yeah, so we have a team system. Um, we also, you know, have a full-time assistant, full-time inside sales agent that um, when I'm out with buyers or sellers that they're making calls and following up on leads that are coming in. So our leads or our phone calls or messages don't have to wait. You know, we can follow up right away. And that's what the inside sales is for. And they basically keep them warm until we're able to, you know, talk to them and sit down and have a conversation. Um, and then as far as the one stop shop, you know, I don't know that it's one stop necessarily in my team or brokerage, but it's you know, we have really good lenders being in it for a long time. We know the good lenders, the bad lenders. We know good title companies to use, not so good title companies to use. You know, things like that, inspectors, roofers, basically anything they need within a transaction. And after a transaction, we have a relationship with somebody that can uh, help benefit them. And they're usually very, very good top of their craft. You you made me smile with one thing you said about the bad lenders. What are, what are bad lenders? And what are bad title companies? I mean, how can we how can we avoid them? Tell tell me how they do they look like? I think you know, um, for me, it's all communication. So and lack of communication, uh, especially if there's an issue or something not going right in a transaction, um, them trying to just figure it out instead of communicating that with the client and with us as their agent. Uh, throughout the process, I think that lack of communication makes them a quote unquote bad lender or bad title company, so to speak. It's not necessarily, you know, they don't offer the same programs or things that other lenders do. I think communication is the big thing that sets a good lender apart. Do you have an example of that where you're working with someone and then the communication was not very good and, and what happened? Yeah, we had uh, recently just a couple months ago, we had a someone that came to us from another state that had their own lender already lined up. And, you know, um, they wanted to stick with them. And it was a condo uh, complex, and they were under contract. And all of a sudden, the lenders not communicating, and we're trying to get information. We're like a week before closing, and the appraisal still hasn't been ordered yet. Um, Ooh, and that sounds messages, bad, right? Yeah, messages, calls, nothing coming back. Um, fortunately we were able to save the deal and extend it and extend it, but it took a lot longer than it should because there was just no communication on the front end and or on the back end with us. And basically what was happening is the condo had to fill out this documentation in order for the appraisal to occur. Um, and the condo complex was taking a long time to figure, fill it out. Well, if I would have known this, I would have gone to the condo association or called them and said, hey, we need this. Can we get this ASAP? Because we can't continue forward with purchasing this property or getting it appraised until that's done. But we never knew that until after the whole thing was over. And was the lender not calling them or like asking for that documentation? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how involved they were because they weren't calling us to fill us in on what they were or were not doing. 
Oh, it's interesting. It's the same thing when, when we bought an apartment here in New York, there was a miscommunication between our agent and our attorney, because in New York, you're supposed to have an attorney to buy a home. And they were not communicating. And that caused a lot of delays and headaches. And we didn't know why. Yeah, the lack of communication is the biggest place or the biggest vulnerability in a buyer's ability to purchase, in my, my opinion, because they need their agent and that lender on the same page throughout the process. Got it. Tell me, tell me, um, how is the market now in the area? What's going on in Fort Worth? It's still Dallas. very much a seller's market. Um, we have still lack of inventory, but we are seeing more and more homes take a little longer to sell. Interest rates have crept up close to 6% now. Earlier back when it was 3% at the beginning of the year, it was still very much seller's market, multiple offers on every property, you know, 20, 30 showings in a weekend. Now we've kind of gone to, you know, a handful of showings in a weekend. Maybe you have one offer, maybe two offers on a property, but nothing like we saw just six short months ago even. Which is actually good news for home buyers, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, it gives them a little bit more leverage, a little bit more time. They're not having to make a decision on a whim, you know, like, oh my gosh, we saw this. It's been on the market four hours. We need to make an offer right now. You know, they do have a little bit more time to evaluate. Because that, that was actually actually very crazy, like having to make an offer within like minutes, like this is a home and let's leave the, home, the inspection contingency out, the appraisal contingency out, everything out. It was very, um, uh, it was negative for home buyers, I believe. So I think this could be a very good opportunity for everyone to buy. Yeah, it, it was definitely much harder for home buyers was, and negative. Um, it left them open to a lot of things like deficiencies within the home that they didn't discover until after they moved in because they weren't able to perform an inspection or what have you. We still made sure that they put the inspection contingency in all of our offers. Um, we, I think over the last three years when the market's been very, very hot, I think we waived the inspection contingency only a handful of times. And that was usually for uh, seasoned investors that they knew what they were doing and looking for. But if you were a home buyer, I didn't feel comfortable waiving that for them. Uh, you know, I would rather them know the full details and scope of the property before investing their hard earned money into it. Yeah, totally. And uh, we always say like, never, ever, ever leave the home inspection contingency out because you never know where you're going to get. Like it is a lottery with your whole savings, your life savings. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, it's not a good lottery to play. Yeah, it's typically <laughs> their biggest financial investment or asset you know you don't want to gamble that based on what the seller may or may not have told you in a seller's disclosure yeah totally so now let's take a quick second to thank our sponsors as you know your credit score massively influences if you can get a mortgage and the rate that you will get this is why before talking to a lender, it is important to know what your credit score is and what can you do to improve it. And this is why I love my FICO, because it is the only credit score company used by 90% of the top lenders in the country. And it helps you understand what will happen to your credit score if you do things like paying down your debts or getting a new credit card. To see how it works and to sign up, just go to tryhomeflow.com forward slash my FICO. Buying a home is the biggest financial commitment in your life and you need to get it done right. This is why I created the Smart Home Buying Calculator, a spreadsheet that includes four super powerful calculators to help you get it right. It includes the buy against rent calculator to help you understand if you should buy a home now or keep on renting. The home buying expenses calculator to know exactly how much cash you need today in your bank account to buy your first home. The monthly payment calculator to make sure you can afford to own a home so that you don't become house poor or end up in foreclosure. It even includes costs like your loan maintenance. And finally, the return on investment calculator where you will see how much money you will make when when you sell your home so that you can know exactly what to expect when you sell. This one is just so great. This will be the best money you'll ever spend. I promise you, it has helped me and so many others. You can get it now at tryhomeflow.com forward slash calculator. Welcome back, Aaron. Now I'm going to ask you a series of short questions to help our audience even further. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. 
Great. Share with us your biggest piece of advice you can give to someone trying to buy their first home now. Get pre-qualified before you even start the process. I see okay. so, so many buyers or talk to a lender, get pre-qualified, pre-approved. I see so many buyers that come in and they've done their calculations on, you know, uh, lending tree or bank rate or one of the online sources, you know, Quicken or what have you. And they think they know what they would qualify for and what their payments would be, but they really haven't had it broken down by a lender to say, hey, here's your closing costs, here's your down payment, here's what you're looking at as a monthly payment if you do this, this loan program or that loan program. It's extremely important. And a lot of people fear, oh, it's going to hurt my credit. The very minor ding it puts on your credit is well worth it in the end because you know exactly what you're looking for, what box you need to be in. Then it helps me. So we're not showing them homes or sending them homes that they ultimately can't afford. Because the very worst thing that can happen in a real estate transaction when working with a first time buyer or any buyer is showing them a home that they can't buy and it's the best and perfect home for them. And now every other home they see after that pales in comparison to that house and they just can't find something like it. So we try to avoid that at all costs. And the best way to do that is prepare with a lender up front. So you're saying even before looking at homes, just look at your numbers and get pre-approved. And you're saying don't get pre-approved online with those online lenders because there's not so much detail on those calculations. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So I typically would, when I'm working with a buyer, I, and I like when they are working with a local lender that I can pick up the phone and I know when it rings, he's going to answer or at least call me back pretty quickly. Um, because they know it's business. Well, a lot of these online institutions, they hire, sometimes they hire loan officers, but a lot of times it's just order takers. You know, they're just taking information and they have no real tie to the end outcome because it gets passed along the chain throughout the process. And then they want, you know, the buyer wonders, I had called and left a message and they said they'll call back in 24 hours. Well, that's not good enough in a very fast moving market, right? So it's, an, it's important to have that relationship and somebody that can really break down the numbers for you instead of them just being on a computer screen. Uh, one of the big things here, uh, our, our tax rates kind of higher than other states because uh, we have no state income tax. So they get the people that own homes. So if you don't calculate that into your payments, you could be way off on what you think you could uh, um, purchase in a home. Oh, so you don't have income taxes in Texas? No, in, no state income tax. Yeah, that's why everybody moves here. Oh, that's cool. I want I want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you're saying your tax rates are higher. How yeah. much higher? Like, could you tell me what um, is a typical tax? In yeah, a so two, I'd three say typical, house? they fall between about two and two and a half percent, depending on where you're purchasing, what entity, city, county, school district, things like that. And is that per year? Yeah. So it's two to two and a half percent of the um, assessed valuation of the home. Which yeah. tends to be always a little bit lower than the real valuation. Is that true? Typically, yes. We see it a little okay. lower, especially in today's market, because we escalated so fast um, that the taxes really couldn't keep up with the rate. Um, but, you know, we've been in the past where we saw the valuation was actually higher than what they owe because people never fought their taxes or what have you. So it's very, very important not only to talk to a lender, but actually to talk to a local lender and to make sure they add all those numbers, including taxes, so that you really understand what's going on, how Absolutely. much you're going to have to pay. Yes, ma'am. And one other question is like, what have you seen are the top mistakes that home buyers make and how can they avoid them? I say that is the biggest one. The other one is trying to schedule like 10 showings in an afternoon. Um, I've, I've done this for a long time and typically four is about the max that a person can handle and identify and keep those homes separate. Once we get past four, they start running together and it's like, did this house had the kitchen that opened to the living room or was it that, you know, and they really start questioning their, what they've seen, right. And what they really like. So we typically try to keep them within four homes at the most in an afternoon. Of course, the next afternoon we go do four more because then they've had a chance to reevaluate those four that they just saw. 
And I remember those times when you're just like going from house to house, car to car, house to house, and then all the papers are like together. And you, if you don't take notes straight away after you see the house, you're never going to remember. Everything is going to be mixed together and you don't know what was what. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one last thing is, what are you struggling the most these days? What are we struggling with? Mm hmm. I would say the biggest thing, and this is more maybe a month or two, is the multiple offer thing. How do you win the home that they love? You know, um, so that that was the biggest thing is how do we structure the offer? So my buyer is the one that's chosen versus the other five buyers that also love this home. Right. So um, that was probably the biggest struggle. And then if we didn't win it, how do we get the buyer something that is the same or superior to the one that they first fell in love with? Can you see, so I, I love that question. I actually want to know how do you structure your offers to make sure they, they get accepted, but do you ever get to know why other offers got accepted and not yours? Like, is there any, is th that transparency, does it exist? It, it does exist, but I would say on a, a occasional basis, not every time, you know, I typically will call or ask, you know, what we could have done to improve our offer and it, a lot of times it boils down to the total net in the pocket for the seller. So it's, you know, price or they offered more things, you know, um, or they took more of the expense like closing costs and things like that away from the seller. So the net for the seller was higher. And it usually, I'd, I'd say nine out of 10 times, it boils down to what one got the best net for the seller. Uh, but sometimes it's what is the, what were the seller's needs? So I always make sure we reach out to the other agent prior to making the offer to find out what are the seller's needs? When do they need to move? Do they need a lease back after the property closes where they'll remain in the property for a period of time? You know, all that stuff that if we can put our offer around their needs, we have a better chance of getting accepted. And that's great. And I think that's what every agent should do, but not everyone does that. Like it's actually not many agents do that. Very few. So very few. So this is why it's so important to choose someone that is doing that, that is making the calls, that is going to ex the extra mile for you to get that offer accepted. Because if not, you're going to go into open house, from open house to open house, you're going to get so disappointed and stressed and you don't know what's the problem. And the problem may be that you don't have a very strong agent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Aaron, you've shared with us amazing information today. Is there anything our audience can do for you? Uh, yeah, they can uh, follow me on all the social medias. You can find me in just my name. Very few people have this name. Uh, <laughs> Delworth area. Uh, you can go to our website, the Kin Team, K I N N uh, Team.com, and you can check out our, our website there. Look for homes and obviously call, email, text, and we'd, be, we'd love to serve you uh, as a client if you are moving to the Dallas Fort Worth area. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being in the first time home buyer podcast. Thanks for listening. I hope you learn a lot. And if you want to have an easy and calm home buying experience, try HomeFlow, an online tool that gives you a straightforward path to buy your first home that aggregates everything related to your home purchase in one place. We also introduce you to one of our trusted home buying advisors that can help you answer the most common questions about buying your first home, such as, should I buy or keep on renting? How much can I truly afford? How can I save money to buy my first home? Or how can I improve my credit score? Once you're ready, we also introduce you to the best real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and home inspectors, and help you review all your documentation so that you can have an awesome experience buying your first home. To learn more and to find out your new home buyer score, go to tryhomeflow.com. And remember to visit MyFICO, the place where 90% of lenders go to check your credit score so that you can review what your score is today and understand what you can do to improve it before applying for a mortgage. To see how it works and to sign up, go to tryhomeflow.com forward slash MyFICO. And don't forget to get the Smart Home Buyer Calculator to make sure you understand your numbers before you buy your first home.
This is a calculator investors use to review their numbers before they buy homes. Just get it now at tryhomeflow.com forward slash calculator forward slash calculator.